Okay, here's a video to explain level one physics, how you can make a graph, get an equation, and write a conclusion all using Excel. So the first job is you get your data. This is from your first day homework. In the first column is all the current, and the second column is all the magnetic fields. Um, a few tricks. There's the first row should be the name. The second row is usually the units. If your columns aren't the right size, like here and here, you can always double click on that little line and it expands out, double click on that little line and it fits the width correctly. Notice none of the numbers have units. It's just the number without the unit. So once you're this far, you've measured all your data, you highlight both columns, you go to insert, this little icon right here and you select the one with all the dots and it makes a graph just like that. You can drag this over. One thing to notice is on the horizontal on the bottom axis Excel will default to put the first column of numbers in this case the current that goes up to two as you can see. The second column of numbers will show up on the vertical axis. So we're almost done. Now we have our graph. We're not quite ready yet. You can click on this little button right here and you can add the access titles like that. Then what you do is you can highlight that little text and change it to current. You should put the symbol and you can say unit of amps or you can abbreviate. Same thing for the vertical axis. You can get rid of that text and you can type in magnetic field. You give it the symbol and unit in this case is the weird unit in the instructions it was in micro teslas. Micro teslas. It's a weird unit. You'll learn about that later. The title of the graph, the traditional title of graphs in physics, is whatever you have on the vertical axis. So you can call it magnetic field versus whatever you have on the bottom axis. That's the traditional title. Okay. Now, lines of best fit. If you click on this, those little dots, and you right click, you can add the trend line. And this pops up. What you want to make sure is it's a linear. Okay. And that's pretty much it. But if you scroll down, you can also click Display Equation. And that's really nice. So now we have the equation. Okay, we don't need this anymore, so you can close that little window. You go back to your graph. It's put y equals 9. We can make this larger by increasing the font like that. So this was y equals 9x, yada, yada, yada. It's not y anymore. You want magnetic field, which has the symbol b. So you want to replace the y with a b. And you want to replace the x with a symbol for current, which is an i. So your equation is actually that. There's no y, there's no x in your equation. And there you go. The last thing you need to do is you need to write a conclusion. Now, if you want to write your conclusion in Excel, and then print the whole thing off like you see on the screen. What we need to do is we need to insert a text box. And you go insert, and you go way over here to text box, and you drag your cursor across, and you can say conclusion. Now for this graph, the easiest conclusion to probably write is, is as the current in the wire increases, so does the magnetic field measured 2.2 centimeters from the wire, which was explained in the instructions that goes along with this data. So that's pretty much it. If you don't have the same operating software as I have on my computer, it might look a little bit different, but XL can be used in this way.